Right now on the morning show, local leaders step out to improve education in the SFL. And the heroic rescue efforts of a local department is receiving national attention. Plus, a major traffic jam in downtown MIA, and the ones responsible have a lot of trunk space. The morning show continues now. Thirty in the morning, and you are hanging out with us for the morning show. Hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Azer. I'm Kristen Anderson. I know a lot of people woke up. I mean, I woke up thinking this. Is it still going to be cold outside, or was that just a little thing that maybe is going to be gone now? Because it's weird, Jeff. Let's face it. It's a little strange to be in South Florida, and it's records, correct? We were hoping it uh, is going to be like a figment of your imagination. Right. You're going to just sleep right through it, wake up. It's going to be uh, 80, 90 degrees again. <laughs> so not you're saying that's, that's not going to happen? <laughs> I'm uh, going to say that's not going to happen. In fact, very uh, considerably below average temperatures yesterday. That trend going to continue right on through the week. Though we'll have a little bit of a moderating trend though today. Not going to be the start of that. In fact, expecting to be a couple of degrees cooler even than it was yesterday. Why is that? Well, guess what? Another secondary reinforcing cold front kind of pushing through to the south. You can actually see some of that shower activity right here. Now, the shower activity plus the clouds you see over the course of the last six hours, those are doing a couple of things. Now, it's chilly outside. You got those winds blowing from the north so yeah we're talking about wind chill advisories especially in interior sections of uh, of even Broward Miami-Dade County now here's the key though these temperatures right this second this time if you're watching the show this time yesterday temperature actually about a degree or two even warmer than it was yesterday now that north wind really gonna be blowing today and I tell you this much still actually going to be picking up than it uh, to be blowing harder than it was yesterday. So guess what? Yeah, going to be windy, which means it's going to be feel even cooler out there today. Nice thing for the commute, though. On Interstate 95, things not looking too bad. Now, I tell you this much. Look at this. We dropped a couple of degrees since the last time you saw this map in West Palm. 38 right now, 46 in Fort Lauderdale. Today, again, another below average day by about at least 10 degrees. 59 degrees in Fort Lauderdale. However, going to show you this right here the next couple of days. A little bit of a warming trend, but guess what happens this weekend. Well, we're going to cool it down again. Mr. Traffic, I'm getting ahead of myself. How are the roads right now? Hey, good morning, Jeff. Roads aren't too bad right now. Lightly traveled for the most part. In Miami-Dade, we still have an active accident scene. This is a hit-and-run crash. I-95 southbound near the exit to Northwest 79th Street won't slow you down because the volume is light. One active work zone. It's closing a right lane eastbound on State Road 112. <clears throat> excuse me, at 22nd Avenue. Again, volume very light. It will not slow you down there. And in Broward County, major roadways are accident-free. You'll find some eastbound construction still in place on the turnpike rather northbound construction on the turnpike restricting a lane near commercial boulevard and near Cypre cypress creek near the service plaza as well one lane restriction southflorida.com slash traffic is the place to check anytime you're heading out kristen and dave over to you all right mr traffic thank you so much it's 5 32 let's get a look at your latest headlines now happening in south florida tisha lewis standing by live at the sfl news desk there she is hi tisha hi dave hi kristen good morning everyone it's the bottom of the hour 5 33 to be exact and we're following your top stories making headlines lines right now in the morning show. Enough is enough. You've heard it before. This time we're talking about community leaders targeting Miami's F schools. Schools and our own Yosvani Rodriguez says they're also targeting the students' parents. Take a listen. Leaders in Miami's Liberty City neighborhood said that young children who walked the halls of this elementary school were born with a chance to succeed. But in most cases, it's the adults around them who failed them. West Little River Elementary School is one of the few F schools in this neighborhood. A Monday, members of the Urban League of Greater Miami officially adopted the school in an ambitious campaign to educate community residents and the children's parents on how education is the key in redeveloping the struggling neighborhood. I would like to say if I were a parent of one of the students or children attending any of our low performing schools in Liberty City, I would be outraged. Over the course of the campaign, league members would distribute posters depicting sobering facts that hamper the children's academic success. They will also be visiting the parents personally, especially those whose children already show patterns of trouble. It's all about parents and their behavior. It's not about schools. We, we're not concerned. We don't have the ability to transform schools. We have the ability to transform beliefs and values of their parents. Parents are the first teacher of a child, and parents set the, set the standards. Parents, if parents make education a higher priority, kids um, will model after that. In Liberty City, I'm Yosvani Rodriguez for The Morning Show. 
And this morning, Florida Atlantic University is concluding its investigation into an alleged fraternity hazing incident that left a student in the hospital. It happened back in October. University officials are raising awareness about hazing on campus and have met with the national office of the Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity. The university says it will make a final decision within the next few days about what's going to happen next. Fraternity member Nicholas Lettery reportedly told investigators he was kidnapped, duct taped, and made to drink alcohol as part of the fraternity's ritual. The university has since temporary, temporarily suspended that chapter. And a local animal services department is getting its time in the spotlight this morning. Miami-Dade Animal Services was one of the busiest animal control facilities in the nation last year. They saved more than 37,000 critters, and because of that, they now have their very own reality TV show on Animal Planet. Make sure you tune in. The new series is called Miami Animal Cops. The show follows the Miami-Dade Animal Services team as it rescues animals in distress while educating the community about responsible pet ownership. You can watch the show each and every Monday night on Animal Planet. Big congrats to the Miami-Dade Animal Services from The Morning Show. I'm Tisha Lewis from the SFL News. Desk. your time at this moment is 536, and those are your latest headlines in South Florida. For more on these stories as they develop, go to SouthFlorida.com. More news at the top of the hour. Back to Kristen and Dave. Thanks a lot, Tisha. So if you're heading into downtown Miami during your morning commute, you probably wouldn't be surprised if there was a little traffic snafu. Yeah, of but, course. Uh, right, but what if it was caused by elephants? Yes, elephants. That was the case yesterday. It's a time-honored tradition when the circus comes to town. More than a dozen elephants from the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus stop Monday afternoon traffic in downtown Miami to make their way to their temporary home at the American Airlines Arena. Motorists appeared uh, more amused than enraged, clicking pictures and waving at the animals as they made the mile-long walk across Biscayne Boulevard. It's a very, very unique show in the fact that it's the first time in 100 in 39 years that Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey has based an entire show around the element of magic and illusions. You're gonna, your minds are gonna be amazed. From January 8th through the 18th at the American Airlines Arena, and it'll feature more than just huge elephants performing tricks. You know, Kristen, if you put two people on an elephant, then you can go in the carpool lane. Save time. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Fun it's a, it's a little known tip. A lot, a lot of people don't know that actually. They don't follow traffic rules anyway. You probably didn't notice because you're busy telling the story. But the light turned yellow. <laughs> Those elephants didn't even slow down. Mm. All right, it's 5:37, and South Florida's winningest lottery player in 2009 has finally come forward. About time. 66. Gerald Margaret Palomino of West Park scored a winning lotto ticket worth 28 mil back on November 7th. However, she didn't claim her prize until recently. The $28 million was the largest lottery win in South Florida last year and the third largest in a state for lotto. Palomino, pictured with her husband Juan here, chose the one-time lump sum payment of just over 16 mil. Good call, and better late than never, right? Yeah, that's not a bad choice. I'll just take 16 million dollars. <laughs> yeah, why not? That's all right, if I have to. All righty, everybody, coming up in entertainment, the shocking death of an heiress. We're going to tell you what happened. Also, former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. Well, the guy with the hair. Yeah, a reality star, according to Donald Trump. Yes, we'll talk about it. Plus, Tiger Woods like we've never seen him before. Meet the new, rugged, darker side of El Tigre. Grr. Gosh, <laughs> that's what he just, he screams grr right there. He does. <laughs> and after the break, South Florida gets to play host to one of the year's biggest bowl games. We're counting down to the Orange Bowl. Grr. Taking a live look at the moon coming up over, uh, well, going down, I guess, over Fort Lauderdale. It's beautiful. It is, Kristen. It really is. It really is. Oh, my goodness. It looks like um, 
uh, a horror movie, kind of, but in a very... But in a beautiful way. Beautiful way. Maybe not the best, but it, it does. That's what it reminded me of. One of those beautiful horror movies. Yeah, one of those. You don't see enough of. Yeah. First of three big football <laughs> games taking place in South Florida over the next few weeks kicks off tonight, the Orange Bowl. Yeah, Carlton Smith, he's one of those diehard fans. He gets crazy. You should see him. Well, Face painting, <laughs> the whole deal. Yeah. Check it out. Here he is. <laughs> They've been pouring into South Florida for a tradition that goes back more than 70 years, the Orange Bowl. And tourism officials say it's always better for the local economy when two out-of-state teams play, in this case, the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And economists estimate this single game generates roughly $200 million for South Florida businesses. But while the game is on everyone's mind, many fans couldn't help but talk about something else, no matter where they're from, the weather. It's a, it's little, a little chilly, chilly, but it was 25 degrees below zero with the wind chill at home this morning so this is great it's great it's too below at home <laughs> so far it's too cold <laughs> yeah we came out here ready to go on the beach i wish it was warmer but it's better than atlanta uh, crowded <laughs> a lot of traffic but we're all for it go gtgt <laughs> go yellow jackets buzz <laughs> in miami i'm carlton smith for the morning show 25 below with the wind chill in Iowa. I know. Welcome to Florida. All right, so maybe Carlton's not that crazy, but <laughs> you should see him when he watches the games. <laughs> Nuts. The Orange Bowl matchup between the number 10 ranked Iowa Hawkeyes and the number 9 ranked Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets kicks off tonight, 8 p.m. from Landshark Stadium. Still to come, even more football. Can you believe it? As we get set for one BCS Bowl, we have the highlights from another. Ah, Kristen, it's a fiesta next on The Morning Show. We're getting our party on. Well, Dolphins fans might agree that new starting quarterback Chad Henney did pretty well this year, but does head coach Tony Sperano agree? A new reason to believe that Sperano doesn't up next. Six on a Tuesday and some sad and shocking news to kick off entertainment this morning. Casey Johnson, heiress to the Johnson and Johnson fortune and daughter of New York Jets owner Robert Wood Johnson has died. Authorities say the 30 year old socialite was already dead when they found her in her Los Angeles home Monday morning. They say they don't know how or when she died, but say they didn't find any signs of foul play. We're going to let you know when the coroner determines the final cause of death. John Johnson was reportedly engaged to reality television television star Tila Tequila. Her family released a statement saying it, quote, is mourning its tragic loss. Time check now, 546, and former Illinois governor Dave Rod Blagojevich, get this, he's landed a new gig, right? He's competing in the next season of Celebrity Apprentice. I didn't even know that show was still on. I have to say, love that show. Wow. I, I giggled a little bit when I first found out about the story. So apparently the whole alleged selling of the Senate seat thing, it doesn't phase Donald Trump because Blagojevich currently awaiting trial on charges of attempting to sell President Obama's U.S. Senate seat. He's denied any wrongdoing whatsoever. Just being ambitious. So last year, a judge blocked the former governor from traveling to Costa Rica for another reality <laughs> show. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. You oh, know that one? Oh, man. I yeah. do. I mean, a reality star. You saw what happened to John and Kate. I mean, it's a big deal. So the Celebrity Apprentice premieres March 4th. And I, I cannot wait to see what happens when he gets I, real. In. This is a, this is another one of those what is the world coming to moments. <laughs> this is another one of those like really, really with the universe. All right, really? well hold that thought because this next story may make you give a really or two the newest cover of Vanity Fair. It shows Tiger Woods, you know, no surprise there, but like we have never seen him before. Check it out. It features a rugged Tiger Dave, minus that bright smile and Nike shirt. Instead, he's bare-chested, lifting weights and glaring into the camera. The previously unseen photo it was taken by celebrity photog Annie Leibovitz three years ago, long before the world learned about his, you know, I guess you could call it a less than wholesome image. You know, this picture's gonna help meet a lot of women. Le Leibovitz says. <laughs> <laughs> she says Woods is an intensely competitive, focused, and dedicated athlete, and the photo was aimed at capturing all of that. Yeah. He just 
pours through the cover right there. He does. Yeah. I, I just don't know if this rugged <laughs> sexiness is... Uh, the timing is a little is a little weird. The timing is weird. not is not great, which is why actually we canceled Jeff's cover. He had the same oh. layout, but we thought rather just stick to the weather and not the cover. With the weights, yeah. yeah. Sifting weather Doing pickers. That, yeah. Weather Panther. That's what I would say. <laughs> weather Panther and Vanity Fair. That's what's coming your way, people. Yeah. All right. Woo. Now I'm ready to give you a weather forecast after that. All right. Good morning, everybody out there. It is a little chilly. Understatement, maybe. Maybe my uh, first or second understatement of uh, 2010. We're only a few days in. I got. To uh, room for a little bit. Anyways, you can see how cool it is. And, and basically, you go from South Florida to Central Florida to North Florida, and we're, we're basically in the 40s, 30s, 20s as you go to the north. Though, interestingly enough, layer of high level clouds, high level cirrus, which you can see over this course of the last six hours on the satellite radar map, kind of insulating us a little bit. So, uh, compared to where we were this time, if you were watching the show yesterday, I tell you, well, we're about a degree or two warmer. However, don't get used to that those winds really uh, gonna be coming out of the north today even a little bit stronger than they were yesterday so it's gonna feel even colder when you step outside over the course of the next hour or so now why is that well reinforcing cold front comes through this morning cooling things down once again for today into tonight a little bit of a gradual warming trend coming your way, though. I'm going to zoom on into Interstate 95 in case you're watching this, wondering how that morning commute's going, at least from a Mother Nature standpoint. I can tell you no problems on Interstate 95 from Fort Lauderdale. Look at that all the way down towards Hialeah, down towards the Keys. Nothing really to worry about at all. So what can we worry about? Well, sure, if you want to worry about the cold blast, there's really nothing we can do about it. But uh, you know what? Sunshine pretty much all the way up and down the coast. So there's the good news. So get got the good news and the bad news if you're not a huge fan of this cold weather. I just got to wait around a little bit. This is our winter, right? So here's the key. This map actually updated a little bit since the last time I showed it to you about a half hour ago. Again, Relative humidities, that's what this is all about. You generally get those winds out of the north, probably feeling those lips a little bit chapped. That's because these relative humidities and dew points are down. Hence, with the wind, we got a little bit of a red flag warning, especially to the north of Broward County. Down uh, as you head to the south, we got a little bit of Gulf moisture rolling in from, uh, well, where else? The Gulf, and that is keeping things a little more moist. So relative humidity is above 35%. Just be careful out there with the wind. Uh, things uh, have a tendency to light up a little bit quicker here. So now yesterday, how about this? 60 one degrees not even thinking we're gonna get there today that average temperature you can see those 76 yeah not even gonna be close for at least the next week or so 43 degrees for the kids low wind chills with those winds out of the north like I said so bundle up those kids here's the way we warm it up though again dry air we're talking about that relative humidity dry air it heats up quicker than moist air that we see in the summertime so 56 by the time we get to lunch but like I said with that cold front you can see those winds really gusting out of the north there and with that small craft advisory in effect for much of the day today uh, no wonder winds out of the northwest at about 17 to 22 knots moderate chop in the bay so you really don't have any business being out there winds start to subside tonight today 59 degrees north wind gonna make it feel a whole lot colder so what do we got going on here futurecast hd what is futurecast basically we're gonna take you from right now through the rest of the day you can see those clouds rolling through uh the the high clouds that kind of insulate us a little bit gonna clear out so tonight promises to be even cooler. Now, there's your future cast. You know what? Maybe uh, today's not the day to head to the beach, but why not play around a golf? Cool, crisp day on the golf course, 58 degrees. Blame those bad shots on the gusty winds. 39 degrees tonight. Winds finally start to diminish, and here we are on the extended forecast. A little bit of a moderating trend as we go through the rest of the week. Watch out for some showers on Friday as another shot of cold air comes to greet you for the weekend. All right, Dave, there's your forecast. Back over to you. Thanks, Jeff. It is that time of year when we get right to the heart of the BCS Bowl season. Later today, South Florida is going to host the Orange Bowl. But first, last night, it was a matchup of non-major conference teams in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Boise State against Texas Christian University in Glendale, Arizona. First quarter, no score. TCU off to a rough start. Andy Dalton fires a pass right into the hands of Boise State's Brandon Thompson for the pick. Thompson returns at 50 yards for the touchdown. 7-0 Boise State. Now 10-0. TCU finally gets into the game before the half as Dalton airs a pass downfield to Curtis Clay, who falls into the end zone for the 30-yard score. 10-7 Boise at the half. Now fourth quarter, look at this play. Tied at 10. Boise State empties the bag of tricks on fourth and nine. Fake punt. Kyle Brotsman throws the pass, and then later on, a touchdown for Boise State. Just a few plays later, two-yard TD run by Doug Martin to take the lead, 17-10 Boise at that point. Later in the fourth, same score, TCU one more shot at it, but a pass is intercepted, and Boise State will win the game. Winston Venable with that pick, 
Boise State notches its second BCS victory. Final score, 17 to 10. On to hoops and some quick Miami Heat highlights. This one was all about Michael Beasley. Beasley had a big old game, did a little bit of everything. He had 20 first half points. How about that? And the Heat would ride his big night to a 92-75 victory over the Atlanta Hawks. Miami improves to 17 and 15 on the season. Now over to football. And last year in his final news conference, Miami Dolphins head coach Tony Sperano gave Chad Pennington a ringing endorsement, naming the veteran the team's starting QB for 2009. Well, this year in his final news conference, Sperano praised new starting quarterback Chad Henney, but has not given the youngster the same honor. Coach Sperano stopped short of naming Henney the 2010 starting quarterback, saying he has to look at the entire body of work. Chad Henney completed over 60% of his passes for over 2,800 yards during the 2009 season, but he did throw 14 interceptions. Right now, it's not even clear if Chad Pennington will be re-signed. The Dolphins have three young quarterbacks to groom, including Henny, Pat White, and newly acquired Tyler Thigpen. And speaking of Pat White, he is back at home this morning after being hurt in a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision in Sunday's game. He was released from the hospital early yesterday and attended the team's end-of-the-season meetings. White did not address the media. And if you want more sports hookup, well, you've come to the right place, my friends. SouthFlorida.com slash sports. Go there. Read all about your favorite teams. Coming up at 6 on the morning show, we've got new pictures of Fidel Castro this morning, and they may be an indication of just how healthy he is. Also, new details have been revealed about the family relationship between accused murderer Paul Marriage and the relatives he's accused of killing. Plus, it's cold outside. More on the winter blast that the SFL is coping with. Stay with us.